out a little bit. Um, thank you everybody for coming tonight. So there's a little confusion on the agenda. Um, 76 on the second page, 76 Wills Road should be a continuance from our previous meetings and request for determination of applicability. Um, so they did move, did you guys have a chance to look at the drawings? They did move the, the, uh, the garage. Um, you happen to see that? No. So they did. So remember how we were asking them to park the garage back? Uh, they, were, they were able to do that. Yeah. And they wanted to take, uh, do some paving and yeah. then make this, you know, uh, gravel or fresh yeah. stone, something like that. Yeah. So if you want to come on up and just talk to us about sure. that, then we're going to kind of make it come in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm short, thank you. Yeah, we need to relax again. <laughs> <laughs> so, John and I Road, 76 Road. Um, as you just mentioned, we had come before you. Um, That's the same way you And you had come out to our property to look. Yeah. And had, um, we determined that we had to move the garage back so it was in no build zone. So, we worked with our architect to get with the surveyor. And we did find a way to, to do that. Um, and so that's the drawing that you have in front of you now. So you can see the building is totally outside of the no-build zone now. So all we would be looking for is for a waiver to extend the existing driveway um, so that we could get into the garage itself. <clears throat> okay. It's actually staked out. Our surveyor staked it out on the wall. Yeah, the you guys right asked now. us to do some color. <laughs> So we did do that if you want to come and have a visual, but we did stake it out so that you can see where the no build zone is and where the garage is and where the driveway is. Okay, so why don't we just uh, try to get out there before our next meeting and take a look at the state the states. Yeah. I mean I think everything's okay, but you know the driveway's pretty wide. Yeah. So let's just take a look when we get out I'll, there. I'll make a motion and we continue to continue it. Uh, what's the next meeting? November 28th. Okay, so make, you make, make that motion, like a second a motion to make a second. One, one more uh, site visit with the states. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to skip the motion on the meeting minutes for now. We'll go right into the request of termination of applicability for the agenda. <laughs> Uh, the Gardner Conservation Commission will hold a joint public hearing under NPL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and City of Gardner Wetlands Protection Ordinance on the request for termination of applicability, followed by the City of Gardner at 95 Pleasant Street, Gardner, for the installation of the gravel parking and recreational area, uh, parcel M27-2045. The party is within the buffer zone of a wetland. Watch the TV. Okay, so um, I know we had talked to you before about this. Um, actually, it's probably like six months or so ago. So what we're looking to do is have um, a parking area that's going to be just a four <coughs> spaces. Um, and then this is going to be a stone dot path. That's going to connect up to the um, our north central pathway extension. So we are looking for a waiver for the 30 foot um, no disturb and 60 foot no build in in the negative three determination of applicability. Um, so for there's not going to be any excavation in the site. It, it's really just an improvement of the area. Um, a lot of plantings and a stormwater report was completed for this because that was part of the site plan review that was just went through the planning board. So Lindsay, this is where the old power yes. plant was before we went down the street, right? Mm -hmm. So it's already been previously disturbed. It's previously obviously. disturbed. That's why there's not going to be any excavation. So it is an improvement in the site. I think the minimal, I mean, it is very close to Crystal Lake. It's definitely going to be an improvement to the area. Um, and I think the most impactful um, work that's going to be done is just they're going to be replacing some of this. This right here is a fence, 
a chain link fence, and they're just going to have to remove some of that and replace some of it. Um, but again, they're doing it very carefully not to disturb the area over there. As far and as then, storm water draining areas, elevations, you can just kind of go over that? It, so it's level. <coughs> it is, and right now, actually, I think a lot of this stuff. Um, just the way with some of the grade is, it does kind of pitch towards Crystal Lake and they it, it will be graded so that it won't be doing that. And then there's, it's going to get up, um, there's some planting areas in here and then up in here, there's another um, map in here that shows a little bit more of that to keep the um, sheet flow from going towards there. You know, I'll be like a pervious surface, so there's not going to be, uh, you know, that's why we're proposing the stone duct path. There's not going to be an asphalt mix because we just want to make sure that, you know, all the water stays up. Grinding? Are you grinding? It's not even grinding. It's just going to be a stone dust path. Is there a timing or a schedule on when you do your work? Um, next spring. We're hoping to, to start this in the spring. I think it'll be done in a month, two months? It should be done by June. Oh, okay, that's pretty quick then. Yeah, it's a, it's a relatively small project. I mean, the area there, there is just really <coughs> sandy, some vegetation that's there now. It's already been remediated and everything? Mm hmm. I don't think it's Yeah.
Prior to Conservation Commission will hold a joint public hearing under MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, the City of Gardner Wetlands Protection Ordinance, and the notice of intent. Filed by Dane Arnold for the expansion of the sludge landfill located at 850 West Street. The proposal uh, work is located within the buffer of the Northern Adventure State of Wetland. This is an, uh, another continuance in 926. So the Commission did have. Uh, request and get approval to do a third party review and uh, we just want to go over that third party review did anybody here to uh, represent the city or the conservation i'm jean christie from time bond how are you doing good mr yeah. chair jan greenwood from wooded Currents here okay I'll myself okay so if you want to just kind of give us an overall summary and then we'll go down through each item and sure. try to see what comes up for discussion so time bond was retained to um, review the notice of intent application, site plans, and stormwater management design under Conservation Commission's jurisdiction. Um, I tag team this one with Melissa Cody, who wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, we thought my presence with you know, regards to stormwater um, may have been a little bit more important with this one. Um, you know, as you all know, this appears to be a pretty strict buffer zone project. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the that Wetlands Protection Act piece was probably a little uh, less involved just per Melissa's review. Um, she really only had a couple things to mention. And um, I should circle back and say that um, earlier this month, a couple weeks ago, we had a meeting um, with members of the city, um, the applicant and myself, and Melissa, to go through each of the comments, make sure that they understood what they were actually what we're trying to get at, um, and then kind of come up with you know a path forward for each of them. So <clears throat> you'll see in my responses that that they, I do reference that meeting a couple times. Yeah. So nobody was there from conservation other than Sophie, who's pretty new. So we're trying right. to just take that. Yep. Yep. And just so everybody understands what we go on this Correct. each one. So. Um, so we want to go through each of them individually. Yeah, um, let's do that. I mean, the first one is um, some questions between the Burner Pools here, uh, Z series. There was some note about the depth of groundwater. It's approximately five feet below grade. And there's a recommendation the commission consider a requested groundwater um, mounting analysis and assessment of impacts, potential impacts of groundwater. So if you want to just explain your, your, yep. your comment on that. So the, the Vernal Pool is located between um, a bioretention basin and, the and one of the infiltration basins. Um, oftentimes in the stormwater design, we'll look at what's happening to groundwater as a result of those features. Yeah. Um, and having a, you know, a, a vernal pool in between, you know, geographically in between those two, um, just raised a little caution for us, you know, thinking, do we need to look at this a little bit further? So in our meeting, we did talk about it a bit. Um, you know, the elevations of the vernal pool um, are, are the proposed um, impact is outside of that 100 foot buffer zone to the vernal pool um, and then the buffer the two infiltration features are even further away from that um, knowing what we know about where groundwater is what these soils likely look like we don't think that it's a concern um, that groundwater mounding as a result of the infiltration systems will not it will not impact the vernal pool um, but i did want to point it out to the commission to or for your consideration if you wanted to think about um, additional mounting analysis for that. I think we're probably okay, but I wanted to bring that up to your attention. Okay. The next one is in erosion control there is locations are clear. Yep, and so that was um, it. Yeah. Do we have a decision on that? Um, are we okay with the discussion? Oh, no, I mean, I think we need to discuss, discuss it a little bit further as a commission, but let's I'd like to come back to it unless you guys have anything else for right now. Yeah. I think we keep going and try to nip, 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 nip away at some of the ones that aren't so uh, critical, like this first one. Sounds like it needs a little bit more conversation with the commission if we want to do the mounting analysis or not. So we'll hold on that one and we'll keep going. We're going to come back to it. I guess. <coughs> so I think some of these are pretty easily addressed. Yeah. So we're going to come back to number one. Okay, so number two is the voice control barrier is not clear. 
Right, so on the original set of drawings that we reviewed, um, it looks like there was just a discrepancy between, you know, your site preparation plan and then like a layout or grading drainage plan where the erosion controls weren't going around the full outlet of um, pipes from the basins. Yeah. They kind of went at the toe of slope. Um, but those have been resolved on the current or revised drawings. This one was all set for us. So is the city that we have a conservation as, commission, uh, as the, the revised drawings? We submitted it, yes, as part of the supplemental information we submitted. When did you send it that to the uh, commission? Last week. Yeah, so we submitted it to Sophie. Did you, did you send it out to us? I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, I can believe so. I have a hard copy of that one. Okay. I had a question. Go ahead. I, I thought one of the discrepancies was whether you can install a silt fence in addition to the other uh, filter tubes. That, that's a. And then that was never really clarified. No, it, so you know what, that's completely up to the commission. That. Okay. I see no reason why you wouldn't do that, but yeah. maybe someone can tell me why you wouldn't do that. Well, sometimes you don't do it on the uphill side. Yeah, it makes sense. But certainly on okay. the areas that we want to protect and the areas that have been in question, yeah, but I, I mean, typically, if you're on the high side and all going to wash down, it wouldn't apply in that location. Okay. Um, number three was, again, again about the burnal pools. Um, in some of our experience, we've had, we've seen commissions require some permanent demarcation around um, vernal pools to permanently you know, notify anybody who's coming in contact um, that 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 feature is there. Um, the applicant, you know, does not feel the same way that because this is kind of on the other side of the landfill, nobody's going to be over there. Um, and please, apply if I want to get something wrong. Um, and it, you know, we want to just leave that up to the commission for your, you know, based on what your precedent may have been in the past for vernal pools. Okay. I don't see that we got that other side of the room. Did you see that on this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 November 1st, and I sent it to you, Sophie. What date? November 1st. I don't see drawings. I just see the, you know, the responses back and forth. Um, Doesn't mean I, don't, I just might not see Wait, it no, no, November 7th. I'm sorry, that was the first one, November 7th. They were attached. It was all one email. It was one, I mean, one file. The, um, the drawings I were attached. I definitely got that. It yes. Yeah. It was attached to the letter. It wasn't separate. Um, number four was again about erosion control and the type of erosion control materials that we're using. Um, you know, Time Bond recommends jute or coconut fiber products just for 
biodegradability, if that's the right word. Um, we leave that up to the commission to decide if there's anything specific in erosion control materials that you require. Yeah, we started doing that not too long ago. I ran into it up in another project I'm working on, and they said no more hay. Rob, are you guys doing the same thing? Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to use hay. Uh, yeah. Straw at a minimum. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we're not opposed to anything, you know, yeah. that the commission wants. That's in the scope of the project. That's in, in also the demarcation for the vernal pool. Uh, just to step back, um, my feeling was it's outside. We're going to have a very fenced in project. It's nothing that goes beyond that fence. So we didn't see the need. But again, in the scope of the project, if the commission wants it, it's. Yeah, know, I think we should keep doing it. Yeah, it's short money in the scope of the project. Yep. Okay, no, that's no problem. So long. Yeah, we'll take the decision of uh, no hay on number four. So that seems that's pretty basic. That's more of a qualification than anything. Okay. Um, so number five gets into stormwater management design. Um, I did go through each of the stormwater management standards um, to evaluate their applicability and compliance with them. Um, standard one is in regard to treating discharges um, and making sure that they're not of erosive velocity, and that standard was met. Standard two was regarding uh, peak rate attenuation. Um, that standard was also met by the design. Uh, standard three is in regards to groundwater recharge. Um, the project does recharge the required volume of stormwater runoff from the um, you know, period. Um, there was a question about what the soil texture is underneath, you know, within the limits of the infiltration features. Um, you know, I, I did you know look into or ask for um, some additional investigations, we got, got a response saying, you know, we've been working with DEP, the Solid Waste Group, um, this is what we've come up with, this is all a bunch of soils data that we have, um, and then some boring data to kind of go through each of each piece of that um, comment. Um, in, in general, I agreed with the applicant's discussion on the soil texture, so we're on the same page there, which also parlays into the infiltration rate use. Um, however, I do request that the commission consider a condition of approval that requires some additional subsurface investigations before construction to confirm their assumptions are true. Um, this is both for soil texture and groundwater elevation. So you want you would you recommend additional boards to confirm what they they assume? That. Yeah, I mean, there's there's they have a bunch of data um, for the site but not specifically in the infiltration basins themselves. If I could just ask a question. Um, in terms of those, we're, we're not opposed, obviously, to doing additional investigations um, when we get some machinery out there, you know, at the tough site. Yep. Um, I'd suggest that um, deep hole testing rather than borings, so similar to Title V, to establish um, both soil texture and groundwater. It's all tied into relative rate anyway, so if I might. Just kind of throw that out there. That's that just use an excavator that would already be on site rather than bringing out a, a drill rig. How deep would you go, Rob? I mean, 10, 10 feet. feet. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they were deeper, but yeah, I mean, if you've got a machine, you can go deeper, but it's not so so the same information. Yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard. Yep. Days. Okay, so what'd you call it? Deep well, uh, deep hole testing. Okay, so for Title Five. You guys are with that. I, that's pretty standard. So that'll be on um, I have a C standard three with equal testing. No problem. Okay. Uh, standard four is regarding water quality. Um, the project has been designed to meet standard four. Um, standard five was regarding um, the land use type. Um, you know, there is, we did have a discussion about this one, a pretty lengthy one, at a meeting about the applicability of a land use with higher potential pollutant loads as a landfill. Um, you know, while this, while landfill during its filling stage would be considered a level because you need to separate, you know, runoff that comes in contact with any waste and put that towards a leachate system, but anything that's on a closed and cap landfill is clean water, I mean, relatively, you know. Um, there's no way that that water is going to pick up, you know, an increase in sediment loading or other things. I mean, it's just a grass surface. Um, so we did agree that, you know, 
since there is a separate leachate collection system, the site is not actually a level down and that once it's closed and capped and maintained and like, in compliance with its operation and maintenance plan. Okay, you guys understand that? You guys yeah. Good? Yeah. Good? Oh, well, I don't know again. Yeah. Oh, you, want to, you don't understand it? I, I don't. I do and I don't. Oh, yeah, could you just kind of just, no. Sure. Sorry. Can you um, summarize that one more time for yeah. us? So uh, standard five is about land uses with higher potential pollutant loads. So that's often like um, the ones I have in my head are like really high intensity parking lots, um, fueling stations, car washes, things that are going to pick up increased sediment or pollutants in the runoff before we manage it in a stormwater feature. Um, during or during you know filling, when this landfill is being filled with waste material. That runoff that gets captured that touches waste goes to a completely separate system to be disposed of. And we can, you know, that's not a necessarily wetlands thing. Um, but once this, once the landfill is completely closed and capped and you know, done, I guess, um, that runoff is just meeting grass and nothing different than a field outside. Um, so there's no increased loading of any sediment or pollutants. Once it's closed, Once it's capped. Once it's closed, it's capped and it's done. You can't, yeah. you can't yeah. It's yeah. just a grassy field, really. Okay. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, standard six was about critical areas, and making sure that we're treating stormwater, you know, for different types of areas that they may discharge to. I did have a question about a designation um, that I think we saw in the Mass GIS yeah. Mass Mappers, Smith Berdecki Water Supply Land. During that meeting, or prior to that meeting, the applicant did do some research at what that means. Um, and it looked like it was a conservation area, not necessarily a water protection area. Um, so, as far as I was concerned, that's not a critical area defined by Mass DEP and Standard, and Standard 6. So, we didn't need to do any additional design features for that. So, we, so it's, it's not a critical area? Because it's not designated as a critical area, or it's it's just a conservation area. It's not contributing to like a water protection zone. Okay. Um, so it's not in standard six of the definition. It's important, but it's not standard six. Important. I, I think the confusion is on that GIS map. Yeah. It says water supply. I know. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. Why it's confusion. It raises a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, standard 7 is about a redevelopment. Um, this project is not considered redevelopment. It complied with the standards as a new development. Um, standard 8 is regarding construction period stormwater. This project does require a SWIP. Um, so there is construction period stormwater and erosion control and sedimentation control um, features proposed, and they'll be further elaborated in the SWIP. Um, I don't know if the commission gets a SWIP. Oh, uh, yes. So you'll get that later. On this one, we would. Okay. Um, standard nine was in regards to an operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater management system. That those uh, criteria were provided in the landfill's whole O and M plan um, with the appropriate um, inspection forms and such. That was all set. Standard ten um, regard with regards to illicit discharges. You know that's something that we can often. Uh, receive a, a compliance statement by the applicant prior to construction. So once we receive that, that one will be all set. Are there any questions about those 10 standards before I keep plugging along? No, because for the commission, I'm, I'm kind of thinking some of these like H, the standard H, the SWIP, and the ONA might get another deep dive review into both of these when they're presented to us if the project proceeds. Just to kind of cover us and make sure that we have everything in there. I mean, I think we talked about that back in the day with the courthouse and a couple other places, and I think that's something that's kind of got us over the years that the maintenance hasn't been completed. Even though this is more of a city project, it'd be a little easier to, to oversee it, but that's something we can discuss with the group. Okay. okay. Um, starting at number six is where I start to get into some of the technical stormwater design pieces. Um, Number six was looking at cover over an outlet pipe from a basin. Um, I misread the plan, so this one was all set. This was my mistake. Um, number seven is in regards to how. Hold on, hold on. So, that you, on the last comment, I said we will revise the drawings to add more 
contour labels around. So something in that revised package, we've already yes. captured that. Yes. Thank you. All right, number seven is um, looking at the actual hydrologic modeling. Um, you know, we want to be able to compare apples to apples in these models. So when the areas don't quite match, we're like, where's that other area going? Um, so we did request to have the, uh, the HydroCAD revised when we they provided that. We're all set with that one. Uh, number eight was about the overflow rates at the infiltration basins. Um, it, you know, in, in the HydroCAD, how they were modeling that was a question for me. Um, but that, with the explanation, we're all set now. That was clarified for me. Um, number nine is again about uh, kind of refers back to the standard three and confirming, really confirming what's out there for soils and groundwater, um, understanding why we use the numbers that we did in the analysis. Um, we had a little more discussion in that meeting that we held, um, but I think if we can, you know, confirm if the commission wishes, confirm what those soil textures and groundwater locations are before construction. We'll, we'll feel better about everything there. Um, and the last one was about intermediate conditions, stormwater. So that's when um, you know, we have an existing condition, we have a proposed condition, which is the closed landfill. But what's happening in that middle time when we're accepting waste, you know, there's some daily cover, there's a leachate system partially online, and where's everything else going? Um, I needed a map to correlate the model to what's actually happening. Um, so that was provided, and upon reviewing that, we were all set with that intermediate condition. Okay. That's it. Thank you. So going back to the, the deep hole testing, what if when we do that test, it's not what we assume, uh, what we assume for soils? What would the plan be for that? Um, I expect the applicant would take a look at the infiltration design again, all the stormwater management again. Um, you know, I don't remember exactly how the city would yeah. proceed with a review, if it's, you know, administrative review, if it's something that we would look at, I expect we would look at it again, um, and then revise CO, um, OOC, I think, if that's our amended OOC. Okay. So we were, that was a very, very conservative model. And, yeah. Um, so you, um, you don't expect that to happen. And, and actually, the regional um, director for water resources was in these meetings and oversees the wetlands at DEP, and they agreed that it made sense to do what we're doing. But I mean, if we're out there, um, when we first start working in the field and start the construction, we can certainly dig some holes and confirm it. And if, and if it turns out not to be what we think, we'll just have to redesign it and make the base a little bigger, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or smaller. Yeah, it's, I, don't, I think there's you know space to change the design without in changing the landfill design. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but we'd be very surprised if it yeah. was different. Yeah. Don't they not do it? Well, that's what they're saying. They did do some. They made some general analysis of what they think was there. Did they have boring? Limited they have boring. No, no, no boring. Or pits. We had test borings. No, they, no there's, that's why they're saying let's do a bigger yeah, area yeah. to get a better sample. If I may, if, if we do find that there's a difference compared to the design, we certainly have to redesign the base and we yeah. come back to the commission. And if need be, um, we could certainly have time bond and take a look at the changes. Um, and I, I assume you do an amended order of conditions at that point, assuming this one in place. So, I mean, we're, we're on board with that. All right, so going back to the, um, the mounting, Analysis. Mm -hmm. Item one. So let me just, just clarify we did do the mounting analysis. Yep. Yeah, and it was in our hydrogenologic report. So that was a three dimensional model. Um, and what we what we did this time around after time Bob gave us a comment was we looked specifically at the final pool, which we hadn't done before. But the, the analysis itself had been, had been done. We did it in a steady state condition and looked at what it was going to do overall. And then we also did an analysis um, on the transient condition as if there was a hundred year storm happening just to see how that would affect. So, we're, um, so, I, so I guess um, when you're talking about additional modeling, I'm not really sure what you would, what were you looking for? Because there was no effect on the fertile pool, really. And I must have missed that because I didn't see that part of it. So that's something I can... Yeah, you want to just take get back at. Yeah. Yeah, there's um there's um the figures of that hydrogeological model shows 
the, um, the groundwater contours. Yeah, I'll go back to that. I don't, I just don't see that in the package. You guys, anybody you want to say here? No. So I came over yesterday, so maybe you sent it and I just don't see it, but I'm looking through it. If I did, it, I know. If I did send it, it would have been right away. Yeah, like it's talked about today. Yeah, because I don't, I didn't yeah. wait. No, Lindsay used to do the same thing. She used to just, something came in like a substantial package like that. She would send us in. And I just. Yeah, so I think that
think that, oh, and we labeled the, the, um, the contours here a little better so that people wouldn't misread them. <laughs> Um, and I think, and then this is this is just the same drawing, um, only, and then yeah, um, yeah, I can't remember what changed here. What did he say here? He wrote that was both. Not sure what he changed here. I don't think the I don't think this one changed. I think I printed this one out. Oh, I know what it was probably because of this. I don't think that would actually change, but I think I just put it out with the detail because it's not saying that it's updated. That was, that was it on the drawings, really. I do. Huh? Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, I got a few. Alan Russo, 211 Bay Spring Road, uh, also in a butter to the uh, parcel. Um, I prepared um, just a short one page list of comments, and you got to be, you can follow along because this is the only thing I'm going to uh, discuss tonight is these uh, one page comments. First of all, you know, I I'd like to uh, thank you as the Guide to Conservation Commission for requesting this peer review of the Sludge Landfill Expansion Notice of Intent. Uh, I have the following comments on the Pine Bond 1119 uh, peer review letter, because that's the only thing I was able to get from the city, was just that letter. I have a public record request to get any information from the meeting that happened between Pine and Bond and Wigan Spring. Uh, two, two left. Anybody want one? Greg, I'll take one. I'll take one. Oh, I'll take one. Who wants it? My first point is I support all of the tie and bond recommendations for further information, field work, and review. Uh, bullet number one uh, recommends the commission request groundwater mounding analysis and assessment of potential impacts of groundwater mounding from the new stormwater management basins on, on Vern pools. This should be done prior to the close of the public hearing if it's going to be done. And the decision on the NOI, not before construction. 
because it could have impacts on anything in the design plan. <coughs> number two, bullet, I'm um, sorry, number three, bullet five, standard three, recommends the commission require additional subsurface explorations within the limits of each infiltration component. This should be done prior to the close of the public hearing, not prior to construction. It should be done now, before they complete, before you approve a notice of intent, orders of conditions here. We don't know what the impact would be on a redesign. We just don't know that. Maybe there's room for change, maybe there isn't. As I highlighted previously to the commission in my first letter on July 25th, I'm very concerned about all these retention ponds and new basins being put around the site. I understand what the reason for those things generally is, but they're all being done near or in, without falls, near the 100-foot buffer. My wetlands are all to the south of this thing. Those wetlands drain to the Otter River. Okay? My spring-fed ponds are also to the south of the site. Again, with the groundwater mounting issue, I'm extremely concerned that something from this site gets loose through fractured bedrock, glacial hill, ends up in my ends up in my ponds where my grandchildren play. I've got five grandchildren under the age of 10 years old. They play in these ponds within a few hundred feet of this site. Very concerned about that. Next one, bullet number five, standard five raises the question of whether the proposed landfill con constitutes an LUHPPL and if additional stormwater pollution measures are required. In my opinion, this project falls within the definition of a land use with higher potential pollutant load, LUHPPL, per the definition in 310 CMR 10.04, which references 310, CMR 22.21, parenthesis 2, parenthesis B, parenthesis 1, dash, parenthesis 6, which includes, number one, landfills and open dumps are defined within 310 CMR 19006 definitions. And the second, number two, landfills receiving only wastewater residuals and or septage. Wastewater residuals monofills. That's what this thing is, the monofill. Approved by the department pursuant to uh, MGL 21 and 26 through 53 and MGL C 111 and 17 and MGL C 83, 6 and 7 and any regulations promulgated there under. So I really think it needs that extra level. It's a sludge land. It's, not, it's a landfill. It's not a flower garden out there next to all these wetlands. Bullet 5 which is number five here, bullet five, standard six, recommends that the commission determine if additional research into the smith Radecki water supply land, AKA Cummings Otter River Conservation Area is warranted. The reason it's called a, a water supply protection area is the city got $200,000 in 2012 from the Massachusetts Drinking Water Protection Agency to purchase that land for drinking water protection, not for the city of Gardner, for the town of Templeton, for their Otter River well, which is in proximity to this landfill expansion. It's a public well, the Otter River well. That's why it's called that. I don't know why it hasn't changed. Now, this was delineated by the town of Templeton in 2012, um, redelineated, and that area wasn't part of the zone too. However, However, I've had a geologist look into the research, uh, to research the actual delineation report and some of the particle tracking analysis they've done within that thing. And constraints were put into the computer model to stop um, the outreach of the zone two in a, in a uh, surface water uh, entity like the Otter River. So they're modeling in that thing, and that's a public document you can get from the town of Templeton Water Department, um, specifically modeled it to end at the Otter River and not go to the other side. So my recommendation there is to consult with the town of Templeton about their analysis and their wells. These are public wells, they rely on these things for drinking water. 
The next item, uh, number six on my list, but bullet five, standard ten. The applicant should provide a list of discharge statement before the hearing closes so the commission can determine compliance with stormwater standard 10. The commission can't make this determination if the statement is submitted after the public hearing closes. This is another item like the additional soil test, the ground mounding analysis, where, you know, to really in my opinion, to do this right, you've got to get this information up front. Not say it's all going to be hunky-dory during the prior construction. Uh, the last item is simply I request that the Commission uh, continue the public hearing to allow the public for the study of the information presented by Ty and Bond and the responses by Wood and Curry. Thank, Thank you. you for your consideration. Thanks, Tom. Oh, one other thing. Uh, oh, you already said that. I'm going to give this. This is from Matt Mara. I'm going to give it to the. Uh, we did get that back. Time you guys had said the first time. Yeah. Uh, well, that should go to us. It should go to us. Well, you, you, you emailed it to you today. Yeah, we, we actually got it the first time. Too. It did go out. Katie sent it to us when you sent it to her the first time. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, okay. look at that. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she sent it with like 20 minutes from you email it to her. Kate sent it right out. Yeah, I didn't see it in the public records yeah. request the email chain. I, so. didn't, I didn't look for it the first time until this you had sent it again or Matt sent it again, and it did come right out. That I was the it. September email from Matt, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. system is designed to catch all of that yeah. and it's pumped to our sewer system 
once a cell is closed, the, the manholes are reconfigured in, in, in their interior to then be true to stormwater. Um, so there's a separation in the two systems from the very beginning. Okay. I got a question. I, I, I think I asked this one before. Uh, to your knowledge, the you engineers, has there ever been a, a leak where what, what's there now has leaked out? I'll let you back. Um, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I'm way. not a solid waste person per se. I'm yeah. a stormwater person. Yeah. So I don't know all the solid no, waste. I, I was, no, I No, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Leaking, not not working. It, 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 I mean, as far as groundwater protection too, the landfill was expressly designed with you know, safety features, liner safety features, to protect groundwater. So it's it's a system that's you know very robust in protecting exactly the resources we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of an important fact to remember as well. So the monitoring of wells is done very frequently. It never really detected anything out of the ordinary. Not that I know. Yeah. So excuse me, are we talking about this particular landfill? Oh, correct. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I guess I, I kind of raised it earlier, and I didn't realize Alan was kind of saying the same thing. What if the, you know, the soil is different and, and the modeling has to change and then the design will change? I mean, typically, this, is, this isn't like a house or a complex or a parking lot or a building or a structure of any kind, it's a little different. You just change, you know, the soils, or you, you know, you change the footprint, you change, you know, the, the footings of the building, the structure. I guess I need to understand more if it were substantially different than what we assume in what this project is designed as, how much of an impact that could be if it was something other than what they assumed it to be. Um, let's see. Well, how about, how about a worst case scenario, you dig in there and you find something that, oh, this, we can't do this. But we, can you give me a worst case scenario? You, you go down and you do, do some pets and you'll find something that you just can't work with it. What? That was designed on a 0.09. Yeah. That, so the particular basin we're talking about was designed at probably the most conservative infiltration rate we can use. And it's actually, I don't believe we're calling it an infiltration basin. It's a stormwater fire region okay. cell. Um, so realistically, there is no worse. We've already kind of designed it as worst case because of the soil conditions. We could potentially go in and find it better where it's a nice sand and gravel. We bump the infiltration and it now becomes an infiltration basin rather than a power tension cell. So, I mean, obviously I'm biased. I don't see any real issue if there's a minor design change because of the soil characteristics. I think it'll be just that, but I don't even anticipate that. If anything, I think it could get better. Right, so that, that's what that's what we discussed with DEP and the hydrogeologist at well let me just let me just take take a look at what's Bruce Bugg's title and who, who reviewed this whole process with it. He is the drinking water program source approval. So he's in Boston DEP and he is a hydrogeologist that worked with high, our hydrogeologist and was very specific about the program and the modeling and how we did that and he reviewed everything. And basically, what we said was, hey, we don't really want to go out and dig some holes in there because it's kind of difficult to get to. We're going to be ultra conservative. Everybody that's reviewed this project thinks that if we do go out there and we'll drill some holes, it's just going to get better. We could reduce our size of our ponds if we wanted to. We probably won't because then they have to pay us. You have to pay us to redo that. So that's why we were so conservative. So you got a question? Your name is? I'd like to make a comment if I may. My name is Ivan Usack, U-S-S-A-C-H, and I'll be brief. Uh, I represent the Miller's River Watershed Council, which is based in Athol, and has been uh, very interested in this project since the beginning, in large measure because of uh, what seems to be the clear understanding among many that landfills often do leak. Now, I'm not here to offer a defense of whether or not this landfill is going to leak or not in the future, but I believe that an objective review of the literature in the field of sanitary engineering, notwithstanding all of the wonderful advances that have been made in the field of public health, 
uh, will show clearly that the risk of a leak to a landfill, despite however wonderful the technology may be, for 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years, we're talking about a long-term framework. Landfills do leak. I think that is a common understanding. I don't know how willing people in the field may be to admit it, and I'm not here to question anyone's you know, credibility or competency, but if you would like more information on the issue of the potential for leakage of landfills, I would be happy to provide additional information in the future. I can't just, you know, spout it off the top of my head. Or you could look into it on your own, but I would ask you to just take into a little bit of consideration that it's, it was suggested that landfills are not going to leak because of the technology, and I, I don't think that it's quite a 100% bulletproof statement. Thank okay. You. How many landfills in Massachusetts right now that are capped? Do you know? That are capped? Yeah, right now in the state. How many capped landfills do we have? I do not know. <coughs> how many are leaking of the ones we don't know we have? How many we have? How many do you assume are leaking right now? That is an excellent question. I, I do not have that information. I would be happy to try to. No, that's okay. I'm just I was curious if you have that information or not. Yeah. If I could just offer one other thing, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting landfills don't leak. Um, of course they can. Um, the, the beauty of this particular project is we tried to keep it out of the wetlands buffer as far away from the resource areas as we could. Um, so not only is it reviewed by you, because we are in the buffer zone, um, this will go through a thorough vetted review through DEP, who we've been basically working with from day one on this to make sure we get it right. Um, but it also goes through MEPA. So MEPA gets a, their hands at on it to review it. So um, DEP allows this permit, and we're going to do everything we can to meet all of their conditions and design requirements for it, which we've been working on, again, from day one. So. Um, it's not the end all here tonight with the Conservation Commission. The state really will take an in-depth look at the landfill itself, um, as well as the, the wetlands issues and resource areas that I, I assume if I haven't received any comment from DEP on the, the NOI filing, but um, they are certainly looking at it with a, a sharp eye. Do you know what time frame on those, Rob, when DEP or MEPA are going to look at it? Is it something we have to approve and then they look, or do they have to look no. first? We, we've been waiting. We wanted to get through conservation before we went to MEPA. MEPA is the next step. Um, we need MEPA's certification before the <coughs> will finalize any kind of permit on their end. Uh, so we were hoping to have an order of conditions in place before we went to MEPA. But the state is anxious. They, they're actually you know, urging us to get this in and get it into them. Um, it's been on their plate for a long time, as, it's, uh, as with ours. So um, they're actually anxious to get a look at it. Yeah, I mean, traditionally, we wouldn't do anything until we get a response back from the EP, right? It's pretty standard, so I don't know why this would change. I assume we have a file number from DEP on this? We yeah. did. Yeah, I didn't yes. think to look. Nobody's really, I don't believe in, there's been any comments from them. No, not at the last time I looked, there was They asked to postpone their review until later. They're trying to click on the seat and click on the seat and click on the seat and click on the seat. Yeah, they couldn't. And in all due respect to the commission, I think we need, yeah. we need to wait until we get a response from MEPA and DEP. Why would we give an order of conditions or something? They may come back. What's their change? I, mean, it, it, I think everything we've done to, to date has been uh, beneficial to everybody. I think we found some, some, some mistakes, or not even mistakes, just different views and different modeling. Uh, we did change some pipe sizes, and I think what we're doing, the, the process is working right now. But I think in, in my mind, and that's, you know, commission up for discussion, but I mean, we've always had a response from DEP in the middle of a- They've been a little slow lately, though. They have. But they, sorry, if I can just Go interject. Ahead, so they didn't have any comments on it? They haven't had anything yet. No, but they did. Once they issue that number, they're going to send you some comments right. with it. Yeah. That's that's what they do. So I think as far as the other, what he's talking about yeah. is for um, the landfill itself, like what they're doing, and not the order of the notice of intent that was filed, which is right. It's the same that's entity right. that's looking at it, but it's two completely separate permits. So as far as this permit, DEP had no comments on it. it I think I remember that's because the limited amount of wetland resource areas that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This actually involves. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull this out. 
yes. in the big picture. I think that's why DP said yeah, we're not having a time for this. Yeah. So it, well, we're getting confused with what you're saying. That's a different process. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah meet, meet is a different unit with the state, and yeah. they, when they do their scoping session for the project, it will certainly be in depth. They'll cover all wetlands issues. So it's um, that's why I say if you were to find yourselves to issue an order of conditions or not. Um, prior to me, but I don't think there's any danger in the project moving forward because I think the state will be looking at this project much more critically. Well, not I shouldn't say much more critically, but it, from a different scope. What? How about a time frame? Nobody knows. It's... Well, MEPA has. I mean, they have a, a, a time frame which is going to take months, um, and then once they've completed their review and issue a certificate. DEP, their timeline is, I mean, we're, we're six months to a year before getting permits from the state and, and you know, being ready to go. So that's why I'd rather keep everything moving than not. Yeah. Isn't the life expectancy of the current uh, sludge landfill four years plus minus? It, give or take, yeah. That's why we're here. We're trying to right. head off the need for huge expenses shipping for our sludge out of town prior to running out of space at the current landfill. Go ahead. Your name is? Terry Griffiths, uh, Templeton Select Board. I just find it confusing that the landfills across the state are closing in 2025, yet you want to proceed with this type of solution as a short-term fix. And again, um, you know, we have generations ahead of us to think about the clean water and water across the United States is in trouble. And, I was also wondering if someone could clarify under 5G standard 7, the language is pretty obscure uh, in that it says uh, the project is not considered a redevelopment, the project is required to meet all of the standards in their entirety, and then it says the standard does not apply. So is there two different things, standards in their entirety versus standard? Is that what it's saying? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to respond. Go ahead, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, standard seven is about redevelopment. If you can prove that your project is a redevelopment, you don't have to meet all the standards in their entirety. You can meet them to like your the best practical, you know, that you're the best you can, um, and some you may not be able to meet at all. Um, but this is not a redevelopment, so the standard does not apply. So it's a redevelopment. It's a, this is not a redevelopment, this is a new project. So it has to meet all the standards in it there. Right. Okay. Thank you. You want to go just open a comment of what we are, where we stood. Yeah, where we are. Is that what we're doing? I was starting to, but I'm going back and forth on what else we can do for this. What number you want? I think we. 
we could maybe do this after the meeting. Just so you can catch up. No further comments in the, uh, the audience? May I just... Your name is? My name is Mary Marsh. And I really would like to support uh, what Mr. Russo said about um, having kind of like our ducks in a row to be able to have the public understand everything before the work has begun. I, I, I guess I understand that the public needs to have an understanding of it, but this is, you know, it's been going for quite some time. So the documentation's been out there, the responses have been out there. So I think at that point, we can't, we can't just drag this on and on and on until we have <coughs> public comment and keep going because it's never going to end. At but, some point, we've got engineers here, we've got third party review, we've got, you know, some of the state involved here, we've got drinking water specialists involved. I think all the data is there. It's a matter of do you understand, do you comprehend, do you have questions? Yes, I mean, we all do. We, we, that's, that's fine, but I think at some point we've got to take all the facts and all the statements and, and the data and analyze it and make a determination, and I think we're, we're at that point. I, I understand where Alan's coming from. A lot of this information that he's given us is, is in my opinion, and we can't take in my opinion as an interpretation of what a CMR code is. The CMR code is what it is, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm kind of going with. No, I, I understand that part. It's, yeah. um, no, this gentleman said that the process could take six months. There's going to be more soil testing and everything. Well, that will, that will occur once they, if the project proceeds and once they get into that, they'll go in and do deep, water, deep uh, soil testing and they'll make arrangements after that if there's something different. But it sounds to me like they made the drawings and the design to the best capacity and worst case standards, which is 29 or is it? And so there's, it can't get really any worse than that. Okay, they, so the soil. If it actually goes backwards, they'll have less standards uh, in, the, in the design. I guess my confusion is with the new soil testing that is going to be done. Yeah. That's going to be done after the project. Right is. now, they design it with their worst case, uh, worst case soils on site. So if they go in and they find it better, they could potentially lessen um, the standards that it's designed to. Be. So we're, we could be potentially be losing protection if they determine that the soils are better than what it's going to designed at. Am I saying that right? Yeah, um, and, and keep in mind too, this is for uh, stormwater control, which is right. under, your, under your purview. Um, it's really not critical to the landfill itself. It's, it's essentially a minor detail, well not minor detail, it's a detail used in the design of the basin. And we just basically, what we're agreeing to is to say, we're going to confirm what we already believe to be the condition there. And if there's a change, you know, we'll come back to the commission. So it's not, it's not really critical to the landfill itself. It's critical to stormwater control, um, which it won't make a huge difference if something's different. So why would we accept having something lesser even, you know, well, it wouldn't be less. It would be less less protection. It'd be a, the standards would change, so the design could actually be pulled back some, as opposed to being as high as it could be. But why would we allow that to be? Because I'd rather have something that's better than what we need than something that just meets the standard. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, I, you, you're, I'm, but I, you, you get what I'm, I'm saying. You could have you could have a million dollars, or you can take a gamble and have fifty dollars. I'd rather have a million dollars. I'd rather have the best uh, design with the worst case scenario taken into consideration, which lessens my potential failure rate over time. I guess I'm not understanding um, why the new testing would, if it's found to be better than what was expected, why would it have to go back? Well, I mean, that's what he's saying. You know. If we went out and tested that basin again, and we actually got a more favorable result, we probably wouldn't change the design. We'd stick with the conservative design because, quite frankly, it's going to cost the city more money to redesign it. Okay, all right. That's where where my okay. question was. Why would you go back and you wouldn't? We wouldn't. Okay. I don't think the commission or the audience wants to hear. We probably wouldn't <laughs> yeah. change it. I think we yeah. have to have a definitive stance nice. from the city of Gardner yeah. that. If soil conditions are finally better, we are still going to stay with the maximum system to 
to be put in there, not for the spring phase. I would commit to that because I'm not going to spend the taxpayers' money to redesign it. I mean, if they had to come back and change anything major anyway, so would we come back for an additional hearing to come and make the modification? Because it's my intent uh, to hold the city to that comment, that they're not going to back off on, on what's been designed, worst case scenario, no matter what the soil results come back as. Yeah. We, we wouldn't be back in front of you. If we tested and found it's pure sand and gravel, we'd just tell you it's sand and gravel and we're continuing on as per plan. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. Thank you. All right, everybody, we now have to go ahead. So, say, so it sounds to me, based on what we've been talking about, we've got a few things left. If you want additional review on SWIPs and things like that, yeah. as the project moves forward, and whether we want any type of illicit discharge statement in advance. That's it. That's all I can use. So that's what. And that would all go is, is if the project went forward, we would bring an additional report to modify or to review and third party review those two items again in, in greater detail, which is pretty standard when we do. We, we always do that. We don't always bring third party when someone's just building a, a berm in front of the house. We get the owner manuals and parking lots like we do with the college and move forward with that. <coughs> No disrespect to your profession, but you're focusing on the best case scenarios, and you know that isn't always the case. So then, what happens? Well, this isn't. He's, it he's isn't always the case. So, but he's focusing on the worst case scenario and saying it could potentially be better. Mm. So he's set up for the worst case scenario. It's designed for the worst case scenario. And what if he goes out there and those additional borings are worst case scenario, nothing changes? Well, they're going to only be what they already planned for because they planned for the worst case scenario. Now, if, you're building a, if you're building a house, right, and you're digging down to your footings, right, which is your slab and which your foundation walls are built from, if you dig down there and all of a sudden you see loose sand, you pull that out, you bring structural fill in, right, because you can make that change. With this, they're already saying, we're bringing structural fill in because we know this is the worst case scenario it could be. Like when you did when you do pylons, and then you probably fuck a lot deeper. When you do that, you you you're not going to go down 50 feet. You're going to go down 80 feet just because of that worst case scenario. And they designed for the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. We could do what ifs. We could do potentials. We could say uh, yes, it could leak. We all got here with cars. The cars all have tanks. The fuel tanks could leak. We all park everywhere. It's a risk you've got to take at some point. So I don't. We can't forecast what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen to that line. We don't know if a tree's going to fall on it. We don't know if, it's, if nothing's going to happen. We can only take the information that we've been given, the science, the data, the modeling, and make a termination from that point. And that's kind of where we are right now. It's that word, risk. When you talk it's about people's risk. drinking water, that's not a good word. Yeah, everybody took risk to get here in their vehicles. I understand. It's the same thing. Not really. Um, so then I'd uh, um, make a motion to either continue or to approve. I'll make a motion that we approve it. So I'll make I a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. David? I said aye. You said yes? I said aye. I was going to no. You said yes? Yep. So the so motion is moved as approved. Thank you. Yep. All right, keep moving. Now, next on the agenda is the order of conditions filed by Mark Thomas for uh, 170 Mill Street. Anybody here for Mark? Oh, how are you doing? Good, how about you? Right here. Not a big job.
DEP did come back with some comments. There was miscommunication within their office. So I did get the comments back from them. I do have them here in front of me tonight. So what did the comments come just now? Uh, they came, I believe, in the middle of last week. So they had issued the order with no comments. Yep. And then, um, I believe, Alina from Zero came back, looked at it again, because she was getting ready to issue a new number. And I'm like, no, we already got a number. We got to check that, cleared all that. Yeah, that's the so it had looked like two circuit writers ended up with the same job. <laughs> I'm like, OK. So she did issue me comments. Like I said, there was only three. I have them right here. I'll read them real quick. What did they come out? Uh, October 20th, uh, 28th. So that was after our site walk. Yeah. Is that the comments one of references to the dam? Yeah, three of them are. Right, we got those. Yeah, yeah. all right, all right. I just have one. Sure so we, we got okay. And so the first one was just DEP confirming that we have discussed the safety of the dam. They said provide a statement. I know at the last meeting we did talk, we talked at the site walk about the dam that the report had stated just some armoring along the slopes to be provided. I'm going to skip the second one because I want to talk about that one a little bit more. The third comment was just stating if any dredging is to occur, a 401 water quality certification to be filed with DEP. Like I said at the last meeting, we're not dredging the stream, everything out by a thumb or by hand. So the second comment, and this is what led to the revised plan changes, yeah, is they so just hard. wanted to see a pipe size for the solution. So my response to them was, we're proposing a 36 inch HDP pipe. The way that we count that was we had assumed a foot of water depth in the solution. There was previously planks in that solution way to have access to. So we assumed a capacity of six foot wide solution way with one foot full of water. And the 36 inch HDP pipe provides an adequate capacity to that model. It's also consistent with the design review committee's recommendation of a pipe to be larger than 24 inches. So all that changed on the plan was the note that said existing solution way to be filled with pipe and stone. I just added a 36 inch HDP pipe as a note. So how is that going to be installed? Like, What's the process to get that pipe installed without causing more damage? So the solution way would be pit clean. <coughs> As you guys saw, it's filled with concrete, rubble, falling down limbs, all that. That would be cleaned out. The boards at the solution way dam end, where they're currently leaking, would be sealed up. So you mean they'd be maintained by them? Yes. OK, so make sure I got okay. Yes, we'll use the word maintained. So with that, there will be no flow coming through that way. At that time, the way can be cleaned out. The pipe would be installed with the stone. Is it, how many sections of pipe is it? What's the, what's the length? Uh, how is the, the connection board? That's why I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think you would do it in the largest sections possible and have couplings on them. A bell coupling, or how would that work? And what's the elevation of that pipe? Does it start and finish? Like, I mean, I can't see the drawing. So, Go the on. slope of the pipe would be maintained to the swoosh way. It would just be laid down at the bottom. Yeah, there should be a start and a, a, a high and a low point, right? So it drains? Yeah, so... It's, I can't see on here, I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right. So it's about 987 in the pool. What did you say, sorry? 987 at the pool. Yeah. To start here. Yeah. And it's... Almost flat through the bottom of that switchway. So what prevent, pre prevents any spillage coming back? It would no, be it flows. I don't know what the dimension. It flows. It flows. I don't know what the dimension is, but it does flow. Yeah, but it now it's almost flat again. I mean, well, still, we, it, it still flows even with all the junk in there. We'd still maintain that same slope. Yeah, it's, 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 all right. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna dig down. In the no, he's not. We're not taking the pipes on top of what's there. Yeah. Once you get all okay. Right. All right. But right. that switchway is relatively flat. So it, it does flow, but... We yeah, more from the force. Yeah, I gotcha. Yes. 
the force of force flow. So what if is is there any damage? Anybody done any design or any investigation on that? The slice way of, is it in good shape or what happens if you know the pipe shifts and as of right now from what we can see, the switch way appears to be in good shape. No, he's not a slice or a core or anything to test it. No, I don't believe he has at this point. Obviously during the time when it's being remediated and cleaned up, if there is a major issue, I would assume it would be addressed prior to putting the pipe and filling it with stone. You know, you got to remember. I mean, the sluice was within probably 100 years ago, and they overbuilt everything because they didn't understand cement. So yeah. they would use six inch, they use a foot. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. So I, I think that'd be fine. And I would just like to know he doesn't have at this time any intention of opening that sewage way, so that would be yeah. maintained as dry. Yeah. The only reason the pipe is going in there That's is worst case. worst case if it happens to open. Yeah. We're still maintaining that connectivity to the other yeah. side of the street. Okay. And that, that was it from DEP. And uh, uh, one question. I, yeah. I think we discussed it too, but I'm going to ask again. The remains of the water wheel is that coming out? We're we talking about yeah the steel. So at this time, no. The intent is to rebuild the columns, the one that was already yeah. started. Yeah. At a later point, if Mr. Harris Smokes does decide to remove that piece of steel in that yeah. slab, we would be coming back yeah. in front of the conservation. Okay. That gets more into it. So for now, I had recommended to him to leave that yeah. and focus on the contract building and yeah. remediating the site. Good enough. Would you read the, uh, the comment, DEP comment on the uh, on the dam again, please. Oh, my response to their original I, both, both. Okay. If you would, please. Yeah. Because yeah. in in going to that site visit, what concerned me most about that site was the dam. Okay. So they addressed it, and then you made a comment back. Which is yeah. So the first comment was, Mass DEP recommends the applicant provide a statement on the condition and safety of the dam to the commission. So. I stated the condition and safety of the dam was discussed at the last scheduled conservation meeting, and at that time there was no major concern raised. We did speak about it at the site walk. Um, Mr. Harris Motes did say that he had the dam report. There was no major issues with the dam, minus the armoring that they recommended be done. So that was when we were talking about the larger stone that would be put on the slopes around the dam. That's our right. the dam. So that was the concern with the dam. Can we? Can you share the report on the dam with the commission? I do not have it, but I can ask Mr. Harris. You, you don't me. have it, but you did all this design, and you don't have the report on the dam on that structural integrity of the dam as it stands today. I don't have it on me. <coughs> but you have. You, you I have, have seen it. Can yes. you get us a copy of that? We're going to request one. Yes, I can ask Mr. Harris. Okay. But you took that report and you took that information you gathered into your design. So we're proposing no work yep. on the dam. I know. We're not touching anything on but the dam. But you everything around it, which would potentially affect the area around the dam, right? I'm asking, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to figure out the right way to say it. So the work that we're doing isn't going to have an impact on the dam. Okay. We're not filling up against the dam. Yeah. We're not taking anything away from the dam. That was one reason why I recommended not to remove the slab in the beams that were there, because the, they do they come back. back they come back to the dam. I did not want to, at this point in time, touch that. So the work that we are proposing doesn't affect the dam. All we're doing here is in the sluice, which is here back to the box culvert when yeah. you come down the drive. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I guess I just don't understand, Mr. Chairman, if um, DEP's in the loop on this thing and the dam was referenced and. It was an inspection of one way, shape, or form. The information was provided to this gentleman. Um, does that not come to us? Well, I probably should. Well, DEP is asking, they, you know, they're basically telling us we should ask for that statement. But I'm asking for the whole damn report. I like the whole damn report. I like how you said it. Unintended? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I, I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions on the, on the new drawings? I think definitely they address what we were looking for and some of the comments, but until this point, I'd like to um, 
continue to the 28th until we get to the end report. I cited that down there. Mr. Chair, can I yeah. politely ask that you make a conditional approval to have no, a popular scan? I, I don't want to. I don't I, I want to read the report first. Because sometimes around like a you even stated the integrity of the dam is only as good as the surroundings, right? So if we're gonna go and do an impact potentially worse than what happens, you open this up for some of the changes, the, the, the earth shifts when he's taking down some of the old building. I just get concerned that we could potentially be missing something with that dam. And I'm probably I not, I'm probably overthinking it. Why not? But I built a few dams in my time and I've also done one of the few inflatable dams in Vermont. And that was a big concern of when we inflated the dam to hold the East River up and, and, and so. Yeah. They were concerned that there was so much pressure holding back the East River that the size of the, 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 the uh, river would actually uh, get kind of impacted and roll back into the river. So I, get, I just get worried about that. I think what Mark's trying to do is the right thing. Yep. We've been asking for him to clean this up for a long time. Just want to make sure we get everything. Okay. The DEP must be in the same position of they are a little concerned. They want to know what the dam's about. So we haven't had much information. The dam hasn't been maintained, and that area hasn't been maintained in years, which is concerned. Okay. I, I'm, and, I'm and, for and, the project. And you know, just yeah. Well, there. I think yeah. all of it. Yeah. Uh, it's an improvement to the site. But when I went to that site visit, the thing that concerned me the most was what work was being done and the impact on that dam. Well, period. Let me let me tell you something. I'll tell you some history about the dam. Way way back, thirty years ago, forty years ago, I was chairman of this commission for seven years. The dam wasn't being used because it had been the, the state said it had failed. Those boards, there was none of those boards in there at all. The, the floor was over over the dam. Most of it was through, you know, through. Yep, the, the, the sluice way. Yeah. Because there was no boards there at all. And I don't know who started putting the boards in, but all of a sudden, and there was no pond behind it. Or very little. I mean, like a. a That's actually like stormwater, really, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. There's both. Two, the brooks, two brooks come into it. But it wasn't, a, it was just a flow. It was a swamp. Somebody added the boards, 